Hello there, welcome to my Germany speed run of Hearts of Iron 4 where I'll be showing you how I beat the Allies in the common turn well before 1941. In this video I'll be showing you how I build the Germans when it comes to the military, the air force, the focus tree, the navy is not too important with the strategy that I use where I can steal the American navy and use that into my advantage. Don't worry, I'll go over that in the video. Uh, my current record has been beating the Allies by uh, March 31st, 1940. If you want to see proof on what the map looks like there, it's pretty obvious. I mean, everyone's been beaten. But if you think you can do it better than me, or do you think you can do it faster, please let me know in the comments. And without further ado, let's begin. So first thing you gotta do as Germany is set your military straight. What you're gonna do is you're gonna have your infantry be split in half between two army groups and set on a border with the Dutch, and then have an attack command go to Rotterdam, aggressive. Same thing with your tanks, but your tanks are going to be set up north and just be aggressive as well. We will be later justifying. We will later be justifying and declaring war on the Dutch. Next thing you got to do is set your air and navy straight, which is pretty simple. Combine them all into Berlin. Same thing with your navy at Wilhelmshaven, and then get them set straight and have them organized the way you like them. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to set your construction straight, build military factories, full military factories in every place that has 80% infrastructure. This way they can be built as fast as possible. Next thing you're gonna do is set your national focus. What I like to do is army invasions first just to get a uh, military high command and a chief of army that are pretty good when it comes to speed. And then after that, I will be setting my focuses all the way to research slot. I used to do the treaty with USSR immediately as I can or fast as I could because there used to be a two year advanced research for medium tanks or I think it was medium tanks or light tanks. But the developers got rid of it, Paradox got rid of it, so I no longer do that. I go straight for army invasions and then straight for a research slot, and then after that I will be doing other things. The reason why we don't do the Rhineland is when you justify and declare war in a country, that demilitarized zone disappears and you can bypass the Rhineland without having to up the world tension using that focus. So, pretty simple cheat, not really cheat, but it's a gamey kind of move. Uh, next you'll do is your research. Any German player will know the basics. It's just getting your mechanical engineering so you can get research boost and me doing mechanical computing after that. And then getting your production as well as your infantry up. I will soon also be doing things with artillery, air production, all the support equipment. A little bit later I will explain out each step just for the, how I do it. Uh, after that, what you're going to do is you're going to maintain a constant stream of troops. What I do is I keep training troops, whether they're under-equipped or not, or under-trained and all that, until I have one field marshal full of them. So I'll have five armies full of infantry with a field marshal, and then Rommel will be underneath another field marshal just for his own sake. And then when it comes to your template divisions, we're not going to, or designs, we're not going to change them at all until we are done with America, which won't be too long. Once we take out America, we will have the time and resources to be able to maneuver around the division templates and create ideal divisions. So what we're going to do is we're going to save up enough political power to justify and declare war on the Dutch. One thing I forgot to mention is when it comes to your production, what I do with the basic 28 military factories you start, I have eight on guns, three on support, five on towed artillery, three on light tanks, three on trucks, three on air, both the airplanes. I got rid of the medium airframe, the bombers, because I don't really use bombers. In the long run, they're a good thing to use, but when it comes to being speed run and devoting resources to certain things, they're not very useful in my opinion. When it comes to Navy, there's people who say delete the Navy. I just let it continue its production, especially with the things that have already been almost produced. It might as well just go through with it, just to get yourself a couple extra shifts. It never hurts anyone. Uh, and just have things go through with that. In the end, it doesn't really matter to create convoys, because you have enough to start with and to finish out the game. Especially when you conquer the Netherlands and America, you'll get end up having like 900 convoys. And with how quick things work, you don't really need to create any, so just let the Navy do its thing. Uh, once the Navy's done being made, honestly, you can do whatever you want with it. You can either be spamming out convoys, you can spam out subs, whatever you want to do, but that's just the way I do things. Alright, so once you get enough political power, which is 50 political power points by the way, you want to start immediately justifying a war goal against the Dutch East Indies. The reason why you want to do this and not the Dutch is one, it generates less world tension, and two, when you declare war on the Dutch East Indies, you have a war goal against them, which makes it cheaper to grab certain parts of it as well as it pulls the Dutch and gets rid of the demilitarized zone and then you can take the Dutch for free. 
Next thing you also want to worry about is declaring war in America. So immediately when you get enough political power after this, which is about 75 political power points again, you will go to the Philippines and justify a war goal against them as well. And the reason why you want to do that is, again, it generates a lot less world tension. Here it's only 2%, while America it's pretty much like in the 30s, I want to say. 61, it's even higher than I remember. Uh, but before I got my 50, 50 political power points to justify against the Dutch East Indies, my agency became ready. And so what I did is immediately went for the localized training centers, because like I said, we want Soviet operatives so we can make a collaboration government in the Soviets and make it much easier to capitulate them. So what we do is we get the localized training centers so we can get Soviet units. And then after that, we're going to just get the passive defense up so we can get an extra uh, agent as well as when we get enough political power. Again, you want to get the elusive general uh, political advisor, forgot the word, and use him so you can get three operatives through three Soviet operatives, make it much easier to create collaboration governments in Germany. While we are waiting for things to concur up, you're going to get your uh, military factories. So for production, after the basic setup I did, is I basically set up to where guns I produce the most of, or put most factories on, then support equipment is not as much, and then artillery is going to be a big thing because we're going to adjust the units to be 7 infantry, 2 artillery, which I know is not the meta. I am nowhere near where the meta is. I just do what I basically have learned in the past and have stuck with it. Then I increase tanks, trucks, airplanes to five, and then later we'll be finagling with this to where we're producing more uh, fighters than casts, and then putting tanks up a bit higher as well. Uh, with the Air Force, again, I got it set. I'm immediately starting to train these guys so they're more effective against the Americans and as well as the Allies when we get that opportunity. Uh, and it uses up a little bit of fuel, not so much to where it's going to kill you. So it's good to train the fighters and the cast immediately. The bombers take up too much, and I'm not even producing them, so we're not even going to worry about that. All right, so my first focus just finished up. I missed it on accident, I accidentally closed it. But what we're gonna do is go down the four year plan and immediately work our way down to that extra research slot. The reason why we want that extra research slot is well, who doesn't want extra or bonus research? It allows you to get things much quicker, much easier. And as well as you're in the process, you get yourself some extra civilian factories, the synthetic refineries and all that stuff is not important considering what I do with America. And then after that, we kind of do our Rhineland, which we will bypass through fighting the Dutch, and after that we should have enough troops to get the Anschluss. If not, it's fine. All I have to do is keep spamming out troops, so getting things like this just to barely a little bit trained. Like for me right here, I barely have some of them trained at all or supplied, and I spam them out. That way we can have enough manpower on the field to get the Anschluss and, you know, get ourselves some extra guns, extra factories, extra manpower, extra everything. Uh, but continue working your way down this uh, when you can until you get to Danzig or War. Danzig or War we will save for when we're ready for the Allies. But other than that, you're just going to work on your four-year plan, all your uh, little bit of industry here, a little bit of air innovations if needed. Uh, other than that, your focus tree is all that. So just keep on spamming troops, keep on preparing yourself. Once Again, once you get to 75 political power, you're going to justify on the Philippines, which isn't too far off. I'm at 50 and I already got my first focus done. Uh, October 12th is when you're expected to fight the Dutch, and I think it's somewhere in January you expect to fight the Americans. But I will see you again when the justification's ready. All right, so our war goal on the Dutch East Indies has been finished. Currently, we have 21 divisions being trained, obviously, just so they aren't complete green, as well as we're about to spam out more, but we're going to assign these guys to our army, so we're going to split them in half, one to one, like that. And then they'll be able to do the thing just easily. But right before the war goal popped uh, or got justified or finished justifying, we have our land doctrine. So we're just going to go down mobile warfare because, again, we're the Germans. We're fast. We're speedy. We're trying to do this as quick as possible. I will admit beforehand, uh, when it came to justifying against the Philippines, I started a little late because I hyper focus at times and I was at like 100 political power when I realized, oh, shoot, I got to justify on the Philippines. So my war goal is a little bit delayed on them, but that is fine. No worries for me, it's still going to be completely fast. But what we're going to do is also look at my agency. So I got the localized training centers, and then I got three passive defenses and one econ er, civilian economy upgrade. That way we got an extra unit, and we also, not unit, but agent, we also got our uh, elusive gentleman here, which is going to pop out a third one once I'm able to get a Soviet troop or Soviet agent out of it. 
uh, we will hire one, but currently these two are both Soviets, so I'm just going to start my network here. It doesn't have to be too big, we're just creating a collaboration government, not too much. Um, when it comes to production, again, still spamming out military factories, still producing all this. I added a little bit of anti-air because I forgot to include that. Because we're going to put a support anti-air company inside each uh, infantry division after we're done with America. So we have some anti-air capability because our air force isn't going to be at full par can, with the allies. I did also get these guys fully trained for the most part. Uh, stop training them, add a new cast uh, support. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these guys over, do air superiority for the fighters and close air support for the cast because what else you need? Logistic strike, not going to matter too much, honestly, with the... Uh, Dutch with America may help, may not, but Americans' air force is always outnumbering us, but it's fine. Uh, when it comes to research, obviously I'm going down these two branches so I can get bonus research speed as well as coordination attack. Industry, normal German industry, you're going to keep going down this, you're going to keep going down dispersed industry. I wait to do excavation just a little bit considering how much oil I get from the Americans. I don't really need the excavation. I mean, one or two won't hurt. Artillery, we're researching this and we'll move down it when it gets there. Equipment, all that. Air Force, we will start researching stuff so we can make better fighters and all that. Tanks, we're going to get improved engine as well as armor. Because we're going to stick with light tanks, so we need something that's fast and armored. So we're going to stick with the light tanks. I want them to hit hard, and that means medium tanks, but medium tanks too long to develop to do this strategy in my opinion. Um, everything else, nothing else has changed much. This is all we have so far. Um, focus tree, I already went over it. We're down to KDF wagon when the war go popped off, but it's fine. And then we'll get that extra research slot to research things faster. So without further ado, let's get this war going. I'm going to declare war on the Dutch because it, or Dutch East Indies, because it brings the Dutch East Indies into the war. If you declare war on the Dutch instead directly, they won't bring them in, in time. So you want to declare war on the Dutch East Indies. This will get rid of your demilitarized zone, like I said, and these guys will just hop to it and fight to the death. Also, one thing I forgot to do is when you do occupied territories, set it to cavalry. They have the best suppression rate out of most things, obviously, like if you see the motorized division, just a little bit le less, but cavalry is the best thing to do. And you just... Now, when it comes to the peace deal, by blood alone has introduced new functions to the peace deal where you can demand resources, resource rights, add war operations, dismantle military. But the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take the Dutch Navy. You're going to need that Navy to help you just a little bit with the Americans. Next thing I do is I take the Dutch itself. That way I have this whole area secure. Now the next part is where it gets tricky because our war score isn't the same way it used to be. What I do is I puppet these two right here. That way I don't have America taking it from me as well as I demand resource rights from them. That way I get oil and some aluminum, don't have to worry about them. Last but not least, we gotta worry about the Dutch East Indies. Now, as you can see, I have 1700 score, but Java itself is 1400. We're gonna leave Java alone, so it's gonna be Indonesia all by itself with nobody interfering, because we get this about the same amount of runner rubber and oil from right here, the place we actually justify it on. Uh, and we can also get more rubber and stuff off of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to puppet all this area. We're going to ignore Java. <laughs> Not the Java uh, coding language. And now we have them as a puppet. All we're going to do is add resource rights to every single place that has resources. That way you don't have to worry about importing things. And then all you're going to do is add war reparations so we can get a little bit of boost to your economy as well as, I forgot, we got to do it with the same guys over here because they have like a factory. And that's how I do these peace deals. Obviously, you can demand more resource rights if you can, but there's nothing here. Adding dismantle, but you don't want them to dismantle. And there's no point in the demilitarized zone at all because they are your puppet. You're not going to call them in, so it's not going to matter. But that's how I do the peace deal. And now, as you can see, we have 72 oil, rubber, and all that. So that gives us more room to train our Air Force if we want, or even our Navy. But currently, our Navy is now bigger, badder. We have eight capital ships and 83 ships total. We're going to move them down here, because if you move them here, they're going to take up resources. You're going to take your army right here, and you're going to make a naval agent.
that way we invade some of the coast and then the rest of the infantry will be all placed here these guys will be placed here and these guys will be placed here i know supply isn't the best but you got to get them there down quickly uh other than that uh, military set. I'm going to wait for our justification to pop off for the Americans. But while you do that, again, we can bypass the Rhinelands. And when you get enough troops, you should be able to do Angelus, which I'm not too far off. Just pop out another couple of divisions. While you're doing that, I'd rather get the research slot first, then do Angelus so you can get extra troops and resources and stuff like that. And I will see you when the justification is ready. All right, so the war goal against the Philippines has popped off, but one thing I want to clarify is I did have to reset like two games. Uh, one thing I realized that never happens to me when I did my first initial uh, try of this, but uh, when it comes to the spies, it is luck whether or not the Soviets capture your spy or not. So I have this now in not Iron Man mode, so that way I can save the game and show you things in one consistent play. Uh, so some things may be a little bit different from this playthrough than the original one you guys were just watching, but it's pretty much the same, nothing too much change. Uh, I just have Iron Man disabled so that way I can save things and not have to restart the whole game over and over. But I highly encourage you doing an Iron Man mode just to see how skilled you are. My, again, record was March 31st, 1940 using Iron Man. I just got lucky that the Soviets never caught any of my agents. But other than that, um, also when it comes to puppeting after the Dutch East Indy or the Dutch War, you want to make sure you don't puppet the Dutch down here because then the ports will have less supply come to you for some reason that function. So you want to make sure you puppet the Antilles and puppet the Suriname. You don't want the Dutch there themselves, otherwise these are not cores for them and there are probably some issues with revolting and stuff like that. Um, other than that, my focuses have pretty much again said Army Innovations, Rhineland Bypass, get the Easter Research, and then go down Anschluss. After that, I'll just be doing things like, you know, infrastructure, aligning people, air invasions, maybe, air innovations, maybe the West Wall. I have yet to do that. Um, not too much you can really do, honestly. Uh, when it comes to the tech, again, nothing much. Just continuing down the research for production, uh, technology, artillery, Planes, I'm researching stuff to get. I don't really care for the camera. Tanks, I have researched the engine and I'm getting the armor so that way when we're done with the Americans, we can remake the planes and the tanks to be more powerful. The tank, more specifically, to be spat faster, more heavily armored, and more likely to pierce through people. Uh, other than that, nothing's different. Can't get too far with it. And then with the naval invasion. So, what's going to happen with the naval invasion is we're going to have five troops land here. Five troops land here and we're going to push through florida after that we send all our available units so all of them to america and you're just going to blitz them you outnumber them probably two to one at this point they have about 30 something divisions and i have about 55 and i'm producing more all you're going to do is use your tanks to your advantage and just speed down up to washington and circle any troops kill them and then continue pushing west after that we will be redoing all of our division templates and producing people and all that other stuff like that but America shouldn't be too much of a problem. They're always weak at the beginning of the game. So without a bit further ado, let's get this going. One thing I forgot to clarify is also use your Navy to do Naval Invasion Escort and exploit a game function where the Navy isn't out immediately for enemies. So when I put it out there, there Naval Invasion off. Quick thing before I finish the time or continue the time lapse. One thing I forgot to mention is you have your command power and your generals, and they all have traits. What I do for my field marshals, I always give them the recovery or recovery rate because when we're pushing quickly, we run out of organization at some point. They have to recover, so I always get charismatic for my field marshal, specifically as a quick attack person. Maybe not as a slow person, but Germany quick, all that. Uh, for Erich von Masten or whatever. Fortress Buster, always great for the attack as well as it helps with any forts that may be a long way. Uh, Heinz, you don't have to really worry about right now. Von Bock has nothing. This guy, again, charismatic. 
And then for the, your Panzers, when you get the chance for Rommel, you want to get that Panzer Expert. But everybody else, that's kind of the general thing right now. But back to the time lapse. That's how you conquer America, pretty much before 1937, I think it was, or whatever. I don't know if my operators keep being captured. I, When it comes to agencies, I personally always get lose track of what's going on with them, so hopefully I can get that settled in time. If you're lucky enough, you should be able to keep your operators, keep them all Soviet, and obviously you get your collaboration going off as quickly as possible. That's what I say. But, first thing you want to do, obviously, is take the American Navy. Who doesn't want that? That's a lot of your points gone, but it doesn't matter because you don't really want to keep the Americas anyways. What you're going to do is you're going to just puppet them. Puppet them and demand the resource rights all in the Midwest so you can get all that sweet, sweet golden oil. Look at all that. You don't need anything from that. I mean, what we can do is we can also demand reparations. I'm not even going to worry about the Philippines. The Philippines can stay where they're at. But I'm going to take that American Navy. I'm going to take the American war reparations and give me all those sweet sweet golden factories but now you got the american navy you got america's puppets and you're demanding war reparations from them so you're getting all that sweet sweet golden oil or resources sorry but now you've got yourself a nice thick navy now what you're going to do is you're just going to go through your focus tree and try to get to danzig or where as possible but make sure you're ready with a naval invasion on britain specifically here in newcastle and or you can do wherever you want but i do newcastle because there's almost nobody defending it half, most of the time uh have enough troops to cover the french border have enough troops to take out poland so what you're going to do when you have that is you're going to take out poland as quick as possible then you're going to do around the maginot get belgium capitulate france and then once F france has fallen do that naval agent immediately have troops ready at it so that when you push in you put all your troops here have a convoy escorting or whatever because i mean you got 200 ships or whatnot and defend your convoys as they get over here and then push down and you will take out britain 